Good afternoon, everyone. I'm very happy to see all of you here with us to celebrate our milestone. I'd like to also thank the Brockton Public Library for hosting us and helping us with all these technical challenges we face in this virtual world. And we are at a milestone, the Greater Boston section of the National Council of Negro Women. We are established 30 years ago. So we are honored that you are here to celebrate this. Thank you so much. This occasion. Our mission is to lead, advocate for, and empower women of African descent, their families, and their communities. We are of service. We are a charitable organization. What we do is so rewarding and impactful that all of you who are here as guests, I hope that you will think about joining us and becoming part of what we're doing. To celebrate our 30 years, we are fulfilling 30 acts of giving, giving our time in many different ways. For example, we produced a video with Mass General Hospital about the COVID vaccine. We have hosted sickle cell anemia blood drives with the American Red Cross. We have mentored high school students on the Academic Olympics competition that, went na that is national, and so much more. Next week, we'll be exhibiting at the Beckma Conference at the, uh, at the Boston Convention Center. I think that's um, Business and Economic Council of Massachusetts, that's what that stands for. And next month, please join us at the MFA in Boston on Indigenous Peoples Day at 10 a.m. at the Huntington Avenue entrance to go see the Obama Portrait Exhibit. We are a 5013C organization. We do accept donations. We rely on donations to keep us going. So you can, uh, if you want to donate, you can make a tax-deductible contribution. You can join us, make an impact on our community. And I'm hoping that all of you put your names in the basket for our door prize, the lovely door prize back there. And it actually includes a novel that I, that I wrote. So you can uh, put your name in for the door prize and possibly get that. And there's food. There's cake at the end of all of this. So I want to uh, talk to you about our founding president, Minister Carolyn Gray. She established this section in January of 1992, our founding president. She was on the board of the directors of the Mary McLeod Institute at Northeastern University for 18 years. She's a former school teacher, reading consultant, and instructor of reading, language, and arts. Recipient of many awards, a member of St. John's Baptist Church in Woburn, where she's, she's the superintendent of Christian education. So it's my honor to introduce Carolyn, who's also my soror, and she also was born on June 17th, which is the best day of the year, which is my <laughs> birthday as well. <laughs> Carolyn will begin the program for us. safekeeping and I went through a whole bunch of stuff and I just found many things so there's all kinds of things going on in my head right now. Over there on that table though I, I brought some things in so we can take a look at because things back 30 years ago are the feeling, the love, the work, the service is the same uh, but the things that we did were a little bit different then. So I'm going to begin right now. The National Council of Negro Women back in those days were called, was called the Council. Now we're known as NCNW, uh, but we were known as a Council before. I, I was a member of the National Council of Negro Women in New Jersey many years before the opportunity presented itself to form the Greater Boston Section. When that time arrived, my thoughts immediately went back to many years in that section. And most of those women were older women, they were retired women. 
And, and they knew the significance of love and friendship and support and living together in this world holding Christian values and beliefs. I learned there the great work the National Council of Negro Women Incorporated had the council had done and was doing in the deep south areas of this country. Now I'm talking long before I joined, there were some really significant things going on in the, uh, um, among the National Council of Negro Women National Organization, such as health clinics in the 1940s and later job fairs to educate and train women and prepare them for the job market when there was nowhere else for them to turn, literally nowhere. Still later, a monument of Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune in, uh, was put up in Washington, D.C. It has been a wonderful and lasting experience for me <coughs> to see the actual working then and since the late 1960s of African American women holding together to provide for each other in the worst of times and in the best of times. Now, there was a new sculpture of Dr. Bethune put up in the Capitol very recently, like within the last month. And it looks really wonderful on the television. But I would really like to go there and see and see it. But that, that statue of Mary McLeod Bethune, it was in the schoolyard. And she's there with two young school students. And it was, that was so valuable to me. I also had the great privilege of raising money to pay for it. And, um, and so now we, 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 move, we are, are moving forward. Now we have a sculpture in, this, in the Capitol building in Washington, D.C., where some other statues had been and now are being replaced. Now, now to the Greater Boston section, 1992. A um, teacher, former t a, a teacher, and now she's a, a, a minister as well, a reverend, uh, Esther Pearson. She was starting a program at Northeastern University called, well, it, now it's, it was known as the Mary McLeod Bethune Institute. But before it got its name, Esther called uh, Bethune Cookman College and asked permission to use the name on a program that she was starting in Boston that she uh, uh, described it to them and everything and they said, sure, you can use Dr. Bethune's name, but do you have a um, chapter of the National Council of Negro Women there in, Great in Boston? And of course we didn't. So when Esther, uh, when Reverend Pearson uh, told me the story about her speaking with people down at, at the college in Daytona Beach, Florida, my memory came back to New Jersey and how I was expecting my first baby when I joined that ch chapter in Scotch Plains, New Jersey. I was expecting a baby, my first one. Um, there, there were a lot of older women. They uh, made me feel so wonderful until all the fear that uh, being expecting a first child, that all went away. And after the baby was born, she's a girl. Her name is Kristen. She's a life member as well. She um, would go. I would go a couple of times a week, and and I would uh, address envelopes and ma do mailings and everything. And they would keep the ladies would would keep the baby would ba babysit. And uh, of course, she got to be a sport, really spoiled. <laughs> and um, so that is my first memory of of NC and W warmth, um, love, um, advice when you ask for it. Um, such great services going back to when, when uh, black women, African American women had literally nothing in many cases. And, and even over there on that table, I pulled out some of the stuff that I have, some of the uh, information that I have on hand at my house and brought it in so you guys could see it. Because in those years, we um, worked with the United Nations. Uh, I can see a, a, a um, flyer of me going to Cairo, Egypt, to the um, 
the uh, Conference on Population and Development. I was there for a month. Uh, right next door, right next to that, there's a flyer of the uh, Women's Conference, also sponsored by the United Nations in, in relationship with uh, the National Council of Negro Women uh, in Beijing, China. People from this chapter went to both of those conferences. Um, then, later on, we sponsored a trip to Western Caribbean cruise. Uh, and I brought a flyer to let you see that. It, it was, that was wonderful, too. Um, back in those days, it was very exciting for me. And, and I, was, I flew to Washington uh, quite a few times um, to meet with Dr. Haidt and, uh, and all the people working there. And, and th we, we didn't have that new office that we have on Pennsylvania Avenue then. Uh, uh, but we have it now, and, and there's a picture of that over there, too. Um, since that time, we have done so much. Um, there are just so many people who, who use their talents and use their know-how and use their love to, to provide so much to uplift and to motivate. And we have men who are associate members. We see two of them right here, at least two here. Uh, we have a life member who passed away yesterday. Uh, his name was Clifford Reed. He was a volunteer Tuskegee. He was a honorary Tuskegee Airman. He did a lot um, in working in education in, in, in our programs um, that we have. And, and worked with so many people. Um, back there, there is a scrapbook that was done by a school in Boston. The principal was a member of the National Council of Negro Women, Catherine James. And we gave them books to that elementary school, the National a Greater Boston section did. And they wrote um, each, each kid who had a book to read, told, wrote to me, <laughs> I was so, I was just absolutely thrilled to see uh, that the kids wrote the book they had read, what it meant to them, and to thank us, the Greater Boston section, for giving them the books. And I brought that so you can see it too. That's the big red album back there. And then there's some other stuff too that uh, I don't want to overstay my time because I can go on and on. Um, and, but here's what I want to show you. Recently, we got a 30th year uh, certificate from Boston. And, and I thought it was so lovely that, uh, that I, I had it framed. And um, so um, you can come and take a look at it. You can take a look at that. We'll put it over on the table. And Lisa. Greater Boston Section of the National Council of Women, Women in honor and recognition of celebration, celebrating your 30th anniversary and in celebration of your faithful fulfilled mission to improve the lives of women, their families, and communities in Greater Boston and your section service in the fields of education, cultural enrichment, health, social justice, and community service. On behalf of the City of Boston, Congratulations on reaching this milestone, and best wishes for continued success in all future endeavors. And it was signed by the mayor. Rosemary 
she is a really wonderful person. She's been a member for a long time. And, and, and she, she, she makes donations along with me to one of our former presidents who have moved on to South Carolina. But she has established the, the uh, Asenia Thompson, Thompson Wallace. She has established a, a scholarship type program for African students. And um, so, uh, Rosemary, me, and you guys, because you always match mine and Rosemary's do de uh, donations to send to that organization. So thank you. And I'm leaving now, I am. <laughs> Rosemary Tucker and I serve as chaplain of the Greater Boston Section and I'm the chairman of the 30th Anniversary Committee. And I now have the honor of introducing you to an extraordinarily talented young woman, Hannah Baptiste. Hannah is serving as the City of Brockton's Youth Port Laureate. She is a graduate of Cardinal Spellman High School where she was the editor of the school yearbook, the president of the Creative Writing Club, and a co-leader of the art club. She is now a freshman at Suffolk University. Oh, nice. Hannah has been writing poetry since middle school. Her prose is so excellent that she recently received a $10,000 scholarship from the Land Poem. Yes. <laughs> from the Land Poem Write Her Future Scholarship Competition. As the Youth Port Laureate of Brockton, Hannah will serve for this school year and will be reciting her original poem at several events throughout the year. Let's welcome Hannah as she ministers to us through the spoken word. Hi everyone, I'm Hannah and today I will be presenting three different poems for you today. My first one is titled Making Space and is a poem about this organization. When the sun rose 30 years ago, a vision, a rocket ship was launched into the sky in search of a greater life for those who were stripped of all the oxygen in their lungs and still expected to breathe for others. The Liberty Bell hasn't stopped ringing since that day because the council said our rights and opportunities for success are here to stay. This organization of organizations created scripture from the crumpled papers and broken wooden pencils in a classroom to make something out of the frustration of not being able to break barriers as easily as the pencil lead we write with. They make sure that, inherit, that injustice won't be our only inheritance and that we can nourish all generations to come with their endless programs in math, science, and the arts like rays of sun shining on the world to feed the core of our community. Outer space may not have sound, but the council teaches us how to hear music in the midst of struggle. They make sure we use our right to vote because it is necessary to sustain the forest in our lives so we may continue to breathe oxygen from this planet. This vision, this light at the end of a tunnel, has allowed those given up on to see the different planets of opportunity they can travel to from the shooting stars we wish on. They work to create light from darkness so that even when a star bursts, we can make do with the remains. Every breath they take emits opportunities and flows down into our lungs, departing as success for all. They make sure that no planet is inhabitable. We take action every day, even as the sun dims and the plants in the ground of our dreams appear to wilt in order to build a strong black America <coughs> and leave a legacy of service to our community. What better way to honor a vision than to leave roots for more trees to grow that'll drop the fruit of wisdom for many to come? To 30 years of service, we thank you for breathing for those with tired lungs and navigating the solar system for us. My next poem is a poem I wrote about Brockton. It's titled, Brockton's Parable of Merged Continents. 
I am from Brockton, born and raised. My home is islands merged together by the ripples in nature that have brought us here, where these infinite pieces of land join together to create one unified city. When the heat in summer rises like balloons in my bones and churns like butter, soothing my bruises from falling on the concrete as I ride my bike down D.W. Field Park, the water transforms into a melting pot of diversity, cultures, peoples, languages, experiences, brilliance. I see all types of birds gliding through the air with ease. The ghost of their wings' presence looms in the air as they commence their journey to warmer horizons. When fall flutters onto the ground and raindrops turn the chalk on the concrete into watercolor, I see my hopscotch lines run into it as another school year begins where we continue to take advantage of Earth's movements to better our future. The stores in the plaza shift over time, a roll of film with new stories to puncture onto our skin and to fill the history books for City Hall. When spring shines in the sky, the warm light, the carefree flight of the birds that have returned home from voyages our bloodlines take, the stars in the sky turn into fireworks, letting us know that we can make noise too, letting us know that the city is one and will not be silenced. These Brockton Rows are a deep sea of cultures, abundant in currents of intersectionality, reminding us that the separate continents used to be one. On these roads, languages dissolve onto the pavements and marinate in the air, leading wisps of wisdom that enters our bloodstream because the streets of this city have wise women with diamonds on their tongues, ready to teach us how to survive and thrive. On each side of the map, where the east, west, north, and south collide like a battering ram to a door, shattering the things that divide us, using its pieces to form a reality we can be proud of. We are not an endangered species. We are a symphony of animals' cries that cannot be contained. Our bones are iron, but will not be made into bars to withhold us. Because the city of champions controls our own destiny, we write our own parables, even when others tell us our story isn't even worth being a myth. Brockton is where my roots have been planted, and they won't budge, even when the seasons crash into each other like overlapping waves. I am from Brockton, born and raised, and our islands and seasons can only be praised. Right. My final poem for today is titled, Rest in Paradise. Rest in paradise to our ancestors lost at sea who decided it would be better to leave the slave ships and find a home in the ocean where they could protect coastlines and avoid the dangers that awaited them in a foreign land. Rest in paradise to our ancestors that broke their backs on the cotton and sugarcane fields, to those in the Civil War who knew freedom was their divine right and fought with the heavens on their side. Rest in paradise to our ancestors who refused to yield the hummingbirds that sing battle songs and give the wind whiplash as they move through the air, full of motion and letting everybody know that they can fly with their arms raised like wings and feet thumping the ground like an airplane leaving the terminal. Rest in paradise to our ancestors who involuntarily passed down generational curses and were influenced by the ones that held them captive we see you and know that the self-hatred in you was not a choice, but rather a means of survival. Rest in paradise to our ancestors lost in the burning of Black Wall Street and the destruction of other prosperous communities who just want to work for their own prosperity instead of someone else's. Rest in paradise to our ancestors <laughs> who spent their lives with their bodies traced in caution tape who always felt like a threat to others because that's what the world made them out to be. And to our ancestors who had to learn that it's okay to be vulnerable because even the earth weeps after spinning on its axis for too long. Rest in paradise to our ancestors who were forgotten, the sound waves not loud enough to reach the threshold and the ones whose presence wasn't present in history books. Rest in paradise to our ancestors who dared to dream and needed to believe they were more than a vessel for others to grow. 
the ones that are bricks of resilience and waterfalls of power. You are magic, you are love, you are the air in our lungs, you are the wonders of the world, the monuments we know existed because the memory was baked in the clay bricks of the pyramids of your history. I hope in your paradise you are showered with the grace of a thousand moons so you may always see beyond the atmosphere to which the world restricted you. May our black ancestors get the rest in peace they dreamed we would one day have as they waited for their broken bones to mend, rushing with the pain of a million broken languages. Rest in peace, rest in power, rest in prosperity, rest in paradise. Thank you. documenting this even today. <laughs> Imelda remembers to take pictures when the rest of us do not, even before cell phones. She is the perfect fit to serve as our historian. Imelda is even more special because she is also a past president of GBS and CNW. Imelda, we really appreciate your servants. celebration. So I'm here today to just go down memory lane for a little bit less than 30 years. I don't have pictures for all 30 years. And you're not going to be here that long. But I think you'll enjoy seeing yourselves, seeing what we've done, and experiencing all of the joy that we have made and within, within our community. So let's start right now. Whoops. We all had an opportunity to meet our current president, Lisa Braxton. And she has done a, a phenomenal job. During this past year, as we've navigated these are her statements, and I'd like to read them to you. During this past year, as we have navigated our new normal, GBS NCNW has remained active and steadfast in its mission to lead, advocate for, and empower the women of African descent and their families and communities. Because of the COVID-19 lockdown, we have had to find creative ways to pursue our service projects and program initiatives, often switching to a video conferencing format in place of the events and meetings. She is proud to say that our nation, or that our section members have done an outstanding job of keeping GBS and CNW not only vibrant, but relevant during this tough season. So what are the current programs? Lisa has told you a few of them. But we have raised awareness about cardiovascular disease. We have a niece, a, a niece, a nurse in our midst who gave us a wonderful program. And we collaborated with Mass General on COVID-19 to allay fears of people of color about the healthcare system. And you know what? We have held healthy cooking classes in Zoom, and they were really enjoyable. And what's more, we have held our 27th, our 27th Woman of Courage and Conviction Awards honoring outstanding leaders in the Boston community. 
and we have been mentors and judges to the Brockton NAACP Academic Olympics. That was a thrilling experience. Our youngsters are dynamite. They have uh, achieved so many different things. I, I'm, I'm going to digress for a minute. There is one gentleman that we um, were mentoring or judging, and he has gone on and has been accepted at Stanford University. Now that's saying a lot. And we have hosted American Red Cross Sickle Cell Anemia Blood Drive. Do you see this lovely picture? This is a cover from our latest journal, and it's the cover of the 27 Moments of Courage and Conviction Awards. And you can look through that journal on our website, www.gbsncnw.r. So please go on the website and you can flip through this journal. You can see the number of the women who we honored. Mayor Yvonne Spicer, Marcia Kim Jackson, Brenda Thompson Stuckey, Dr. Jeanette Adele Callan, and Claudine Buff Lopez. Now, these two fine ladies were celebrating natural, National Red Day to raise awareness about our cardiovascular disease. Don't they look great? Yes. That's a girl and Now we have transitioned over to multimedia events. We had an author chat with our GBS president, Lisa Braxton. She told you that she is the author of the talking drone. Now, I hope that that person is here today who received, oh, they will have to be here this today. <laughs> yeah, so you'll have an opportunity to read your book. And she went along with Catherine Adele West, the author, who is the author of Saving Ruby King, partnered, partnered at Susie's Bookstore. And that's a black owned bookstore in the North Shore. We worship together on Father's Day virtually at St. Paul AME Church and we attended multiple MLK celebrations at the Merrimack Valley, Rockton Branch of the NACP, and St. John's Baptist Church. And we even went down to Bridgeport, Connecticut to do a virtual, well, we didn't really go down, but we did <laughs> do a virtual <laughs> membership team. And we participated and participated in Get Out the Vote. Everyone's voting this? This season, right? Yes. Everyone's voting. Yes. Good. Yes. Now, there's another thing that we did. The Edmonia Lewis stamp. We sponsored the unveiling with other organizations. And you can see that it is pictured in our sister's magazine, which is the national magazine. There's also another picture there of Linda, Linda and, and Lisa, and they're with Elder Sinhouse, she's 111 years old, Aww. and she has been made an honorary member of our organization, and she was thrilled to death. So thank you for doing that. Uh-oh, parade of hats. <laughs> Dr. Dorothy Hyde, who was our president, our national president for over 40 years, always wore a uh, Hats galore, and you can see our members demonstrating them. Ah, I see a couple here, and I see a hat that's on this slide here, too. <laughs> my, my door I, I, I now, we also collaborate with other organizations, and we work with the Delta Research and Educational Foundation on matters of uh, um, research matters for all of us campaign. And we co-hosted a talk with Tufts Clinical and Transitional Science Institute on COVID-19 and mental wellness. And we co-sponsored with Sai American Chapter of the Alpha Kappa Alpha Society, COVID-19 from, from back, virus to vaccine. So that's some of the things that we've done just this year. Now let's look back on some of our previous years of activities. So we're going to meander 
through the years 2018 to 1999. Look who we have here. This is the 25th Woman of Courage and Conviction honorees. And some of the ladies who we honored are here today. Susie Perkins. Yes. Susie, would you like to raise your hand? Our beloved Mimi Jones. And I'm going to. I'm, I'm sorry, I was just trying to uh, um, pop my, pat my team. Then we have Denise Turner with that wonderful hat. <laughs> and our past president, Charlene Green. Here are some pictures of just people who were, were at that uh, luncheon. And here's a, a grand picture of all of us as we celebrated the wonderful awardees during that uh, luncheon. We also had an unveiling of the Dr. Dorothy Hyde stamp in 2017 with the Urban League at the Roxbury Library. Charlene Green gave a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful <laughs> presentation of doc about Dr. Hyde. And I couldn't resist having this picture here of her and her darling mom, Mrs. Ellis. of our trips, we went to Washington, D.C. Now, do you know wondering why we were going to Washington, D.C.? Whoops. 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 What did I do? I'm sorry. We're going to Washington, D.C. We're going to see the Museum of African American Heritage. And of course, while we were there, we stopped by to see the Martin Luther King uh, statue, and also we were at the U.S. Capitol. Here are some pictures at the Martin Luther King um, statue, and here we are standing right in front of many of his, his sayings. Sorry? We have our own room at that museum. Uh, yes, you're, you're, yes, you're stealing my thunder. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you're stealing my thunder. <laughs> 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 you're stealing my thunder. <laughs> and here, here are some other pictures of us. Do you see yourself there, Deborah? <laughs> <laughs> then we went off to the Capitol. Notice there are lines and lines and lines, and there are umbrellas, because it was raining when we were there. But we went to the U.S. Rotunda, and you could see us standing there, and we had a wonderful information uh, about all the pictures there. And then, of course, we wandered off, and lo and behold, there's Rosa Parks, <laughs> Congresswoman Shirley Chisholm, and Frederick Douglass. Now, you know, we do have to go back as Carolyn Gray said, go back and see our lovely picture of Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune. Uh, Charlene, do you think they can do that? Sure. Oh, that would be great. <laughs> <laughs> and here's a glorious picture of all of us. And we really enjoy, truly enjoy being there. Now, Denise, this is the Museum of African American History with our NCNW officials, just to lay one of the pictures in that room. You see Dr. Hyde? Dr. Hyde? And Dr. Mary McLeod was in. Yeah. Now, we went off to that museum. And I'm telling you, now you're wondering why I have this picture here. That's, that's Dr. Jeanette Cole's graduation. 
and these are some of the articles from uh, Josephine Baker. And lo and behold, Barbara Robinson is up there with Serena and Venus. <laughs> One of the things that we do is that we do have membership teas. And this membership tea was entitled Inspiring with Vision, Performing the Extraordinary. And these are the women who were there. We have uh, wonderful women. We had wonderful uh, musical presentation. We had dancing. And we had a lovely cello. And we've honored her which you will see later on. One of the things that we do is we do fundraisers. And one of the fundraisers we did was go to, the, to see the Unleashed American. And we were standing there with actor Johnny Lee Davenport. And was, that was at the Stoneham Zoo. See Rosemary? She's it's in the forefront there. <laughs> yeah. Hey, and look, there's, uh, hi. How are you? <laughs> you snuck up on me. <laughs> this lady is sitting right in the third row from the, from the back there. <laughs> Another membership team where I invited two of my friends from South Africa, and they agreed to wear their, their tribal uniforms and with Sabella. And do you see that we have a lovely display of food which was all gone at the end of our membership team? <laughs> uh, Carol Folk, president and CEO of the partnership, spoke. Uh, Violet Apple was our MC, and there is Mimi Jones, and uh, Carolyn Lassiter, who was a, a former president. Just to give you a little bit more uh, idea about our South African friends, and their customs. They gave us a very good in-depth talk about being in South Africa and the differences between their two tribes. And it was very enjoyable. Again, there's our membership with our uh, beloved Mary Harris. Another thing that we did, and we didn't know what we were so good at, was golfing. <laughs> so we had a golfing uh, uh, tournament. Women of Courage and Conviction Awardees in 2014. And the awardees from, from right to left are Ribbon, Laura Buchanan A. Hart, Evelyn Hammonds, Bithia Israel, who was in that form of, who, who had, is in charge of City Strings, Barbara Robinson, who has received the President's Award for all of her hard work on all of our different uh, banquets and awardees, and Ron Walker, who has. Ron Walker is works with um, a group named COSBEC, Coalition of Schools Educating Boys of Color. Here's Carolyn Gray. She was our founding president, and she was a president two times here at uh, GBS and CMW with what the honoree, Reverend Laura Buchanan Ahart. We encourage youngsters to participate in our banquets. Here you can see some junior musicians. And here are some of the uh, other people at our banquet with Reverend Regina Scherer, who was our, our speaker of, the, of that particular banquet. Family members there. And you see that quilt? We have a member who did, who did, who quilted. And she uh, quilted that, and we auctioned it off. Another group <laughs> membership. But I, I enjoyed going back and, and I and seeing how we all have remained the same. <laughs> <laughs> Another woman of co uh, courage and conviction back of journal. You can see that there's a lot of variations and a lot of hard work went into making each of those journals. Now here is another membership team, and it's showcasing Kurtura hats from the Do Dolores Reed collection. You can see a, a few of those hats right now, and there's a multitude of them. And lo and behold, 
Here's our current president. <laughs> there is our founding president. There is our host for today. All delightful wearing those hats. Aren't they beautiful? Just a few more slides for you. Um, we also do fundraisers and going to see plays of African American titles. And this one was ruined, and it was at the Huntington Theater. Afterwards, we were it. We worked. We were all talking to all the actors in the play, and that was very, very unusual. And usually, one or two actors would come out but the entire group of actors came out and talked with us, and so we really had a, a most enjoyable time. And we attended many of the Black Woman Association Black History luncheons. Now this was a fun, fun event for us. We cooked with youngsters at Haley House. They actually learned how to use knives, they learned how to use vegetables, they doctored learned how to make a, a complete dinner. And we really enjoyed that. Now, I, I don't have another picture here, but I wanted to, to mention one of the things that uh, we, we really enjoy doing, and that's career day. It's so important for the youngsters to know that there are jobs out there. And they, Carol, uh, Charlene Green, has had a pop, gave, gave them an opportunity to meet people in all walks of life from teachers, policemen, uh, armed services, electricians, and actors. Guess what, where the children gathered around most? The actor. I guess he was really handsome. <laughs> and here's another picture and with uh, Dr. Gloria Hammonds. You can see her picture right on the left. Now this is the 12th Woman of Courage and Conviction. You can see we've really gone back far. And I'd like to point out Dolores Reed. She's a woman who had all those hats. All of those hats belonged to Dolores Reed. <laughs> Another group of us, 1999. This is when I was president and I am um, Oops, I did it again, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is when I was, I was president. I, have to, I want to point out me there. <laughs> <laughs> this is a current list of our GBS NCNW offices. Lisa Braxton, Linda Klein, who couldn't be here today, Lily Cousins is our a second vice president of membership. Lily, want to raise your hand? There. Yeah. Barbara Robinson, who is on our video, she was financial secretary. Adine Lattimore, she's our former secretary. Ada Robinson, she's not here today. She's our corresponding secretary. Susie Pickens. Tucker is our chaplain. Lucas Myers is our parliamentarian. And Pat Monteith is our community engagement chairperson. And Amanda Price. I want to leave you with this picture. This is a picture of our website, www.gbsncnw.org. Please go there and, and again look at that wonderful journal that we did. And we invite you all to join GBS NCNW. Thank you very much. Sorry, I didn't turn this off.
you see why I called her a memory keeper. <laughs> okay, we are in for a real treat. Uh, we have an incredibly special musical treat from Michelle Mungo. Michelle's many accomplishments include being a multiple Grammy Music Educator nominee, a three-time winner of Showtime at the Apollo, the recipient of multiple Best Artist Awards, Gospel and RB categories from the New England Urban Music Awards, and the recipient of the Berkeley Urban Service Award. Ms. Mungo is a recording artist, professor, songwriter, and choral master. She has performed internationally, including with the indie album, What Matters Most by Soul United 1 and 2, which topped the UK soul charts. She has worked with Harry Connick Jr., Phil Perry, Kirk Whalum, and Sinbad, among others. This exceptionally talented performer has been the guest music director for Stax Records Music Academy and done commercial work for the Massachusetts Department of Public Health. Nichelle has sung the national anthem for the New England Patriots, the Boston Red Sox, the Boston Celtics, and the New England Revolution. The Bruins need to step up to the plate. <laughs> and she has served as guest clinician for chatting with the masters with Grammy Award winner, Dorinda Clark Cole. We're extremely excited to welcome Michelle Mongo to our program. Well, hello. How's everybody doing? It's such an honor to be here, and I have an immense amount of respect for all of the work you all are doing for our for folks like us. It's a it's a hard fight, and the fact that you all stuck in there 30 years, 30 years, 30 years. And albeit a slow movement, at least we're moving forward. Especially with the fast evolution of technology, you all have great giftedness to keep our youth involved. And it's, we, we see you. As Hannah said earlier, we see you. We appreciate it. And we wish you many, 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 many more years of success with this organization. This is my accompanist, the esteemed Adam Littlejohn. know him, <laughs> for sure. Um, when I was asked to do this, they said, oh, sing, some, sing a gospel set. I said, okay, for sure. You found out 30 years of service, so we put together some songs for you all. This is the day we have breathed, because without God, there's no, no life, you know what I mean? We have Let's Stay Together, although that is secular, but the words can be in everything because, I mean, in relationships, all types of relationships, people come and go, but you all stay together big time. We also have the um, staple, um, The Best Is Yet To Come, and Total Praise, and then our last one will be I Need You To Survive. So if you know these, we want you all to sing with us. Well, are you all willing to do that? Yeah?
Christ did this one, but we um, took a, a piece from the Lisa McClendon version. So you know it, sing along as well.
God in these times because it's really odd, it's painful, and it's just a lot going on. But there's an immense amount of strength and togetherness. So if we encourage each other to survive, we will definitely make it through this. And if you know it, <laughs> you all know it, you know it, sing along with us. And Adam sings too. Thank mm-hmm. you. 
through these continued next two years and in the meantime write a book that got very good reviews, including in the Boston Globe. So whoever wins that book, you're in for a treat. So uh, uh, I want to uh, uh, introduce you to Lily Kusan. Uh, Lily is our Vice President of Membership, and she's also going to uh, invite you to play a game. Uh, the Greater Boston Section of the National Council of Negro Women Trivia. Uh, so, uh, also we'll pass out papers and pencils, it's just for fun, but if you have any questions about QBS and CNW after this event, Lily is the one to see. <laughs> okay, uh, Lily, are you... Lily? Yes, Are you? I get the paper and the paper. Okay, I can get the paper and pencil out if you want to get it. Um, whatever you want to do. Okay. And then Lily. As we've been talking, uh, uh, thank you, Rosemary, for it that uh, compliment about my book and for and seeing our program. And we've been talking about uh, Lily as she's the membership chair. And uh, while you're here before you leave, you may notice on the back table that we do have these uh, lovely brochures that Pat Monte designed and have printed and folded. And they have all the information that you could possibly find out in a very quick way about GBS and CNW how to get onto our mailing list, how to see our website, and um, to contact us. And we also have copies of our application. So feel free, please, feel fill this out while you're here. And uh, we are happy to take a check or credit card or whatever you'd like to do if you'd like to join us. So I'd like for us just once again, wasn't that a wonderful, wonderful celebration we just had? And it was so inspirational. And I just want to thank our anniversary committee for putting this all together. And I also want to thank Pat Monteith, our community engagement chair. She's just a The Brockton Public Library, you hosted us. You were able to underwrite this for us. Your technology is wonderful. And I understand that uh, we'll be able to see this on YouTube at some point also. So we're going to get uh, more, more exposure for our organization and, and all these uh, talented people. The talented Hannah Baptiste, our poet. Let's have a round of applause again for her. As well as our singer, Michelle Mungo. And so just so you know, we meet on Zoom. The first Saturday of the month, 10 a.m., our events are in person, but our meetings are on Zoom. So you can just roll out of bed in your pajamas, hit the uh, power button on your laptop, and you can join us. Very easy. And um, I would like for Lynette to come up, please. Are we, we're going to do the uh, door prize now because uh, they're getting ready, so we're going to just keep things moving. So has everyone put their name in for that um, the lovely door prize? Oh, yeah. <laughs> If you haven't, um, Carolyn has the basket. If you want to tear off a piece of paper with your name and your email address, just toss it in and we'll have somebody choose the uh, recipient of this lovely prize. So just to give you a little teaser here, we have some lovely jellies and jams, and there's chocolate bars. There's some, uh, <laughs> oh, on the line. We have sweet mints. We have some gourmet gingerbread cookies. And these are tea towels, a mug. More towels, and there's some uh, tea, olives, and the topping drum is here also. So are we all set to do our drawing for the door prize? Yes. Okay. 
Carolyn's on her way up now. We're going to go ahead and see who our lucky winner is. So do it slowly so she can <laughs> Capture every moment. Those are uh, Charlie's, I think. Were your glasses on the floor? I so saw you, you dropped them earlier. Yeah. So, are you going to video? Are you video? Are you, are you still shopping? Okay. Okay. The biggest paper been there. I'm just kidding. If we can't read your Latin, if we can't read your name, then you didn't win, obviously, right? Gladys. 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 S. The last name is S. Gladys S. O. R. at gmail.com. Gladys. Okay. Who is this? March on Washington and the anniversary 
more than 50 years later. So this we had to pay attention to the slideshow. Name a woman of courage and conviction, a warrior who attended the first march on Washington, D.C., and the anniversary march 15 years later. Carmen Fields, Joyce T. Gibson, Mimi Jones, Sevilla Smith. Carmen Fields, Joyce T. Gibson, Mimi Jones, or Sylvia Smith. Sylvia Smith. Sevilla, sorry, thank you. And our fifth question. The Boston section was founded in 1995, 1992, 2002, and 1982. The Grace Boston section was founded in 1995, 1992, 2002, and 1982. Who's, who has, who are the following has never served as a corresponding secretary? Who has never served as a corresponding secretary? Lisa Braxton, De Denise Willis Turner. That's a typo. Denise, but that's a typo. <laughs> okay, I got it. Ada Robinson, I emailed the price. Who has never served as a corresponding secretary? Lisa Braxton, Denise Willis Turner, Ada Robinson, or I emailed the price. And question number seven. The women could be courage and conviction. Banquet speaker went on to become a NCNW national president. Who was it? Janetta B. Cole, Barbara L. Shaw, Ingrid Sanders Jones, Thelma T. Daly. The women, the women of courage and conviction speaker went on to become ne the National Council of Negro Women national president. She's the national president now. Janetta B. Cole, <laughs> Barbara L. Shaw, <laughs> Ingrid Sanders Jones. Uh, Thelma T. Daly. Well, she's not necessarily the president now. She became a president. Now, which one? I repeat the answers. The choices again: Janetta B. Cole, Barbara L. Shaw, Ingrid Sanders Jones, or Thelma T. Daly. And question number eight. <laughs> In 1994, a banker program, who was the following? Who are the following is not listed as a member? Who is not listed as a mem member of our 1994 banker program? Joyce Durst, Ada Robinson, Mona Robinson, or Rosemary Tucker? Our 1994 banker, who are the following is not listed as a member? Joyce Durst, Ada Robinson, Mona Roberts, or Rosemary Tucker. I'm not gonna be much longer, I know y'all ready for the cake. And question number nine. Which GPS Greater Boston Society National Council of Negro Women member received the AWRP Massachusetts Andrews Award for Community Service? Which member received the AARP Massachusetts Andrews Award for Community Service? Mona Roberts, Charlene Green, Louise Myers, or Barbara Robinson? Mona Roberts, Charlene Green, Louise Myers, or Barbara Robinson? I hope I'm gonna get this name right. This is Amy. Emil Doko, thank you. The Boston Celtics have had several other black coaches who isn't one of them. Casey Jones, Jimmy Rogers, Bill Russell, or Doc Rivers. Besides Emi Adoka, the Boston Celtics had had several other black coaches who isn't one of them. Casey Jones, Jimmy Rogers, Bill Russell's or Doc Rivers. Five more. <laughs> Not many, I'm sorry. 
Which mother and daughter appeared together as our W Women Courage and Conviction banquet speakers, Lisa Bonet and Zoe Kravis, Diana Ross and Tracy Alice Ross, <laughs> Jada Pinkett Smith and Willow Smith, <laughs> Carol Simpson and Malika Marshall. Malachi. Malachi Marshall, I'm sorry. No, that doesn't sound like it. <laughs> you have to know it. And question number 12 was, who was the number, what was the number of our Women, Courage, and Conviction event that was held virtual? Which event was held virtual? What year? The 20th year? The 26th year? <laughs> the 30th year? Or the 25th year? Which of the Women, Courage, and Conviction bank was, was held virtual? The 20th, the 26th, the 30th, or the, 30th, the 25th? We only have three more questions. <laughs> One of the programs Greater Boston Society and National Council of Negro Women supports is City Strings United, who is the president of the organization. Betaya Israel, Alice Hyman, Doretha Gibbons, or Cheryl Seminole. One of the programs GPS NCNW supports is City Strings United. Who is the president of the organization? Bataille Israel's Alice Hyman, Dorothea Gibbons, or Cheryl Seminole. Which region has not received a donation from GBS WNCNW? Was it Botswana, Eswatini, Eswatini, Kenya, or the U.S. Virgin Islands? Which region has not received a donation? From GS, from our society, Botswana, Eswatini, Kenya, or the U.S. Virgin Islands. And our final question is: <laughs> This the last one. The Boston section was founded at what local church? Metropolitan Baptist, Bethel AME Church, St. John's Baptist, or Murder Baptist? Now we're going to get the answer so y'all can leave here with y'all bragging rights. <laughs> the answer to the first question is Clarence Thomas. Yeah. <laughs> and the second question is, the answer to the second question is 1935. <laughs> the third one is August 28, 1963. August, and the fourth question is Mimi Jones. The fourth answer is Mimi Jones. <laughs> The fifth one is 1992. And the sixth question is email the price. The seventh answer is Janetta B. Cole. The eighth answer is Rosemary Tucker. The ninth answer is Louise Myers. The tenth answer is Jimmy Rogers. And eleven would be Carol Simpson and Malika Malachi Marshall. And number 12 would be the 26th. That was the virtual, which was the 26th. And 13, Bithia Israel. And number 14 is Botswana. They have never received a donation from us. And number 15, it was found at St. John's Baptist Church. And I want to thank each and every one of you for coming out tonight. If you're looking at disappointed in the back like me. <laughs> Thank you, everyone.